Hello everyone, the purpose of this brief video is to go over step three for data. I'm in unit four, lesson two, data analysis, and I'm at step three data sheets. So there are a couple different items here for you to look at. So the one that I want you to pay attention to is this bottom one called Copy of Mickey Chi Square, Take 2, 1, Revised. So this is, I want to show you why this is a really cool chart. <clears throat> and I want to remind everybody in the class, if you're using a Mac, Mac does not do well with Excel. It messes up equations and it messes up your data. So whoever's putting this into Excel in your group needs to really be using a, a PC um, and if your group has problems with that you can talk to me we just need to be very careful with um, Max so here is Mickey X uh, Chi square take two one so what you're going to be doing in step three is you're going to be putting your data from step two into the charts for step three and I just want to briefly go over what chi-square goodness of fit tells you. So when you have an event and you do impact evaluation to see if there's any changes in knowledge, attitudes, or behavior after the event, that is your observed change. What's very interesting statistically is if you did nothing, there would still be a change in the data. So what you observe is here, and what is expected is here. And what's happening in this chi-square chart is it's looking at your observed data and comparing it to what would be expected to happen if you did nothing. So here's what you did, and here's if nothing had happened. So this is a really cool chart because, and there are enough, there are enough items on here if you wanted to use this, you could. So if we put in 22, on the pretest, got it right, and 30 on the post test, got it right, and then 10 got it wrong on the pretest, and 5 got it wrong on the post test. It calculates all these numbers. So this is what we observed, but this is what we would expect to happen if we didn't do anything. If you gave them a pretest, did nothing, and gave them a post test, this is what you would see happen statistically. But we're looking at what this actually does now, behind the scenes, mathematically, it tell, it's calculating information. And so what this is telling us, it's this last number, chi-square, what this is telling us is a percentage of how likely it is that you were responsible for the change. Now this is mock data, so we're looking at mock data instead of real data, so this is, we're just gonna pretend like it actually happened. So very important when you're reporting your data, we are not testing significance. We are looking to see how likely it is that you caused the change. So when you report this data down here, it would be 88.46 or 88.47% likely that you caused this change that this many more people got it right and this uh, many fewer people got it wrong, we're 88.47% sure you caused that change. Okay, so here, let's just look at, so on this one, because the numbers are different, it says that it's 98.77% likely you made this change. So I'd like you to use this chart um, to see what happens Sometimes it corrupts. I want to remind you that every colored square has an equation in it. And if you mess up the equation, you're just going to have to start over. I can't go in and fix it. So here's pretest, post test. The, these are the ones that are not shaded or colored. Those are the numbers you change. And what you're doing is you're taking the numbers from this sheet, your step two, 
and I would have to change these and, and reverse them to match this. But what you're doing is you're taking these numbers and you're putting them into this sheet. That's all you're doing. So the purpose of this sheet is just to really help you get organized. Once you get this chi-square number, 88.46 or 88.47, then you would write in here 88.47. And that means for this teacher, this class, we're 88.47% sure that you caused the change to happen. And this is important. We're going to come back to this in a little bit. Okay? So that is a sheet where this happens, but I think you're going to all be safer using this social statistics data sheet. So I want to go through this with you and show you how this works. So you are going to be using the chi-square calculator and it says take me to the calculator. It takes you to the calculator. You put in your categories. I don't know what's on the other sheet. I'm just putting it in. Make sure this matches whatever your step two is. So it says enter the group categories and values. I did that. I hit next. Now it wants me to put in numbers. So I think what we said on the pretest, um, I think we said three people got it right and 23 people got it wrong. I'm sorry. And 23 people got it wrong. And on the post test, I think we said 14 people got it right and 13 people got it wrong. So all you're doing is you're taking your step two data and you're putting it into this calculator. You will then hit next and it's telling you that it's going to give you significance level at 0.05, but we're not really going to deal with that. But don't change this. Leave it like it is. Then hit calculate chi-square. And what it gives us is it gives us numbers and you're going to look at the p-value. That's the number you're going to report. For each one of these, you either need to copy and paste it into a document, or you need to screenshot each one, and you would say, teacher like Dawson, um, ninth grader, whatever the identifier is, question one. And then you would say Dawson, question two, Dawson, question three, Dawson, total knowledge, Dawson, um, knowledge and attitude combined. So let's talk about what this p-value is. In order to find out how likely it is that you caused that change that we just typed in there, is you would take this number and subtract it from one. So if we take one and we subtract 0 0.001671, this tells us that for this question, we're 99.83% likely to have caused the change. So this would be the number you would report. You take this p-value and you subtract it from 1, and you get 99.83%. So that's what step 3 is. The goal is at the end of the first week, you have step 3 done. So again, you would take this, ideally, Take a screenshot, and then I need to open up a new document. Okay, let's make this big. Mm, my computer screen is frozen. Mm. Here we go. I would put the teacher's name as the, whatever the identifier is, question one. Paste the screen in, and then after you do question two, you're going to paste that screen in. You need to have all this data, and we'll talk about in class whether you're doing this as a group or as individuals. So again, what you're doing at this point in time is you are taking your data, and you're putting it in this chi-square calculator, you're then going to take the p-value, subtract it from 1, and this said I think we were 99.26% likely to have done this. And so don't compare the two numbers because if you compare the two numbers, they're going to be slightly different. If they're extremely different, 
then we should talk about it. So again, you're taking this data, putting it into this, and then when you're done, you, this is question one, then you go back home, chi-square calculator goodness of fit. Nope, that's the wrong one. Go back to here and then just copy and paste this, um, copy and paste the address that's up in this, and you can't see it on my screen, but copy and paste that and just keep one back here. You're going to get every, for every single question, every single teacher, you're going to have to put the data in. It's very tedious, it's very time consuming, and we'll talk about how to do this in class in a more reasonable way. So this is step three, it's, and then once you have this data, we're going to work on getting it, all your data into one summary sheet, and then we're going to look at the mock data so that you can start to analyze what the data would mean. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in class.